We need to talk about Super Robin Hood. Robin Hood for the Amstrad CPC was designed by those cheeky little blighters, the Oliver Twins. It was, in fact, their first big success with Codemasters and earned them a pretty penny. We showed them the game, they really liked the idea of Robin Hood, and we asked how much they would pay us for it if we produced this game. Uh, to which David answered, £10,000. The general concept was to make a standard exploration game, but using a license of sorts to try and hoodwink unsuspecting mums into buying it for the kids because it was a name they recognised. Unsurprisingly, it worked because your mum knows nothing. Sorry, that's harsh on your mum. She's an angel. It didn't take long for the game to get ported across to other systems, and thanks to Mark Baldock, James Wilson, and David Whittaker, we here in the land of the ZX Spectrum managed to get our hands on a game we'd not really been waiting for. Super Robin Hood. I'm not sure if anyone has ever actually explained why they prefixed Super onto the start. He isn't Super at all. Normal Robin Hood would have been more accurate. Actually, no, Fragile Robin Hood would be the most apt because my gosh, Robin Hood is apparently made of toilet paper. Hi, I'm Super Robin Hood, Super Prince of Thieves. I'm here to rescue Maid Marian and- ah! I remember this game very fondly, and coming back to play it now, I can sort of see why. It's nicely animated, it's got those punchy cartoon visuals that Codemasters would have you believe were better than actual sex, and it felt relatively open-ended, at least initially. By open-ended, I mean you could go that way, or you could go that way. That's a lot of options in 1987. The overall goal here is a fairly simple one. You're tasked with not dying, which is easier said than done, but in the process you'll need to explore a massive convoluted castle in order to collect the various hearts hidden away in alcoves. You collect these hearts in order to save Maid Marion, which makes absolutely zero sense, but it's fine. Get heart-shaped MacGuffins to save woman from a naughty sheriff. Fine. That all sounds pretty basic, and it is, but there's more to Super Robin Hood than just wandering around. You also have to pick up keys and then wander around again. Keys in this game are everywhere and you need every single one of them because every single one of them activates a lift somewhere. Now that somewhere is a big factor in why I've wanted to immediately book a holiday to some war-torn country in order to relax, because Robin Hood, sorry, Super Robin Hood, as an exploration game, is like walking up the stairs to go and get something, realising when you reach the top that you can't actually remember why you're there, going back downstairs, remembering what it was you wanted, then going back upstairs only to fall over halfway and die. There are two things coming together here that are rubbing against each other, like your grandma rubs against your granddad's leg. Some might find it endearing, but most are going to find it fairly gross. You have to explore this enormous castle, but you are the least equipped person to even go for a stroll. I'm Super Robin Hood, Super Prince of- ah! Damn it, that really bloody hurts! Robin takes damage from enemies, but he also takes fall damage, and sometimes he takes that fall damage from a slightly awkward angle. The hoof meter at the bottom happily chirrups away every single time you so much as think of something mildly dangerous. Meanwhile, you're just trying to work out which way you're supposed to go. This is the map for Robin Hood. It's not a small map by any means, and it's designed in such a way that you will absolutely get lost. I can't count the number of times I thought I was going the right way, only to be confronted with a dead end and realise that it was one of the 12 other ways that I should have gone. In the meantime, going anywhere accrues damage, because some sections are just designed in that it's impossible not to take damage. Whichever one of the Olivers decided this was a good idea is officially the evil one. And if they both came up with that idea, then I'm afraid we're all doomed because these two are basically video game terrorists. I'm probably being slightly unfair. You can get health back from... Coins? That was a coins, right? Coins? You collect coins for health, but not hearts. Coins? Oh, according to the instruction manual, those things aren't coins, they're unlabeled medicine? Just random pills floating around in a castle. Far be it from me to halt your fun, but uh, 
Please don't go around eating random pills. Robin Hood would be an entirely different story if you spent the entire time mashed off his face. The sheriff calls us outlaws. But I say we are free. And one free man defending his home is more powerful. Let me just reiterate that this game is needlessly cruel. You're given one life to attempt to do all of this, and certain sections of the game are just specifically designed to shit all over any enjoyment you thought you were having. Like this bit. Or this bit. basically just the entirety of the last third of the game, because here's the thing, you don't just need to get through these things once, you need to backtrack over and over and over again, to the point where you've essentially explored the castle 45 times as you approach the end. But approach the end I did. I approached it. I approached it, and I found the damsel in distress herself. Shake it, baby. Shake it, baby. You see that there? That's a lift. An unactivated lift. In the case of my own playthrough, it will remain unactivated forevermore because after playing this game for a solid 70 minutes, I could not for the life of me find the hell where that key is. I spotted this key, but I couldn't find any way to get to it. And looking at the map, it's not even accessible. Again, chalk that one up to the evil Oliver Twin. I'm Super Robin Hood. Super. Ah! I decided I needed a cop out, so instead of completing the game, which by this point was making me want to smash my head repeatedly off the monitor, I used RZX Archive to see what the ending was. I've never felt so patronised by a line of text. Super Robin Hood didn't review particularly well back on release, it received 52% from Crash, Sinclair User gave it a 4 out of 10, and Your Sinclair only mustered a 6 out of 10 score for the poor old thing, but despite all my complaints, there's still a fair bit to actually like about Super Robin Hood. It's almost impossible to see them now that I've played through it, because I just want to die, but there's definitely some good things in there, I think. So, I mean, a list of good things. I mean... The Amstrad CPC version's meant to be alright. And, uh, there's... So that's Super Robin Hood for the ZX Spectrum. Do I recommend it? Probably. I reckon it's worth picking up just to see how far you can actually get, because trying to complete the thing, start to finish, is like trying to sleep in the same room as your cat's litter box tray. It's borderline torture, but it's doable. What an accolade that is. For me, I feel like I've sickened myself. I went back to a beloved childhood favourite, fully expecting it to be not as good as I remembered it, and then finding out that I actually think it's worse than the imagined dislike I'd already read in myself for in the first place. Like this bourbon biscuit. I used to love these as a kid, and as an adult, I've come to find they don't even have any bourbon in them. And they taste like shit. Well, as my grandmother never once said in her entire life, that sure was a video. Uh, before I go on to the next bit, I just want to thank Snorkers for uh, being Snorkers, basically. He was the Robin Hood and Maid Marian, of course. I went on Twitter and asked people's opinions on Super Robin Hood. I didn't really get an awful lot back, and then I completely forgot that I did it, so I didn't actually use any in the video. So I'm just gonna read some of them out now. Primo Karma said, I remember Nout because I never played it, but surely this information was useful to you. This is the kind of shit that I have to deal with. Mateus Bayer said, played it on the NES, completely missed the Spectrum version. I can't do anything with that. Patrick Furlong said, not a bad game, plays better than the C64 version. Pity the Oliver Twins didn't port it themselves. Plays better than the C64 version is a given, really. Games from my youth said, Can't say much about the Specky version, but the CPC version is awesome. I, I can't do anything with that. It's not about the CPC version. Retro Video Game Virus. Excellent channel, by the way. I'll leave a link to that. I played the shit out of the C64 version. Actually, he's Scottish, isn't he? Should I do it in a Scottish accent? 
I no, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to do that. I played the shit out of the C64 version when I was a kid. Loved it to bits then. When I play it now, I see it for what it is. A buggy, crappy, tacky, broken mess, but still love it because <laughs> the nostalgia memories. Okay, so this basically just summed up my entire video in the space of, like, a tweet. Tom Potter says, I loved exploring the map and gradually unlocking new areas. I've never enjoyed games that put you under artificial pressure, and I really appreciate that this game let you stop, think, and plan your next move. I finally completed it just recently. A cracking game. Well, I wish you were here right now, Tom, to have completed the game for me because I never want to attempt that again in my entire life. 